Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen across our beautiful country of Canada, our friends south of the border in the United States of America, across the pond in Scotland, United Kingdom, Europe, Portugal, Africa, Middle East, Asia, back to Central America, South America, New Zealand, Australia, China, India, Russia, Ukraine, Korea, Japan, all over this beautiful planet it's your favorite angry Canadian on the 20th day of April 2020 Canada will soon start heavy artillery deliveries to Ukraine Canada will send heavy artillery to Ukraine Prime Minister of Canada Justin Trudeau said at a press conference promising to disclose more details in the days to come according to him this is how Canada responds to the specific needs of the Ukrainian side. Chongtihua 都应把精力放到支持外交谈判上来。继续大规模送枪送炮,不会带来和平,只会使冲突延长升级,使人道灾难更加恶化。so mentioned, uh, Western countries are promising Ukraine more military aid to boost its defences as Russia ramps up its attacks in the east. Now, amid the flurry of support, Germany... Europe's biggest economy stands accused of not doing enough to help. Trent Murray joins us from Berlin with more. Uh, Trent, as we heard there, while several European nations pledging military support, Germany is saying it's reached its limit on arms that it can offer to Ukraine. Uh, what's been the reaction? Uh, yeah, uh, Jill, that's right. I mean, uh, quite a bit of confusion, a, a bit of criticism, but I think most of all, a lot of questions. And that is because of this extraordinary press conference that we had overnight from Chancellor Olaf Scholz, where he, he fronted the German media. Many here expected he was possibly going to come with a fresh pledge to provide more support for Ukraine. Instead, uh, he said he would be sticking to the course. There would be no more military aid coming for now. He says the German armed forces essentially have been stretched thin based on what they have given already. Now, at the start of Russia's invasion, about 1,500 uh, anti-tank and anti-aircraft weapons were handed over from the Bundeswehr, the German military, to Ukraine. Uh, but he now says those handovers really won't be going ahead anymore. Instead, what he's looking to do is provide financial aid to Ukraine to help them privately buy weapons from big defence manufacturers, including some of the ones here in Germany. But that has really left a lot of people scratching their heads, especially in the foreign policy kind of circle here in Berlin. And that is because he also said that it wouldn't be right for Germany to, quote, go it alone and for Germany to lead the pack here. But given what we've seen in the past 24 hours, that in itself is an extraordinary statement because we have seen the UK just pledge more anti-aircraft missile vehicles to Ukraine. The Netherlands sending artillery. Finland announcing a fresh package in the past few hours. Even Norway saying they will hand over 100 anti-aircraft missiles. So Germany is definitely not leading from the front here. I think we can say that objectively. But many, of course, as you say, saying Germany should be doing more given it is Europe's biggest economy and a major defence power here across the continent. Mm, no, Trent, uh, we're going to have to leave it there, but uh, thank you for that report. Trent Murray is in Berlin. The U.S. has already supplied in excess of $3 billion worth of weaponry. I believe Canada's around $1 billion. Hey, man, war is damn good, damn profitable. Pentagon is all set to host what we thought they would. Top arms companies in America today, if reports are to be believed. A protracted war in Ukraine is a massive, massive, once-in-a-lifetime profit opportunity for America. And it is time this U.S. war bonanza is exposed, ladies and gentlemen. Let's debate.
The writing on the wall indicates it could be a protracted war in Ukraine. Today, Kyiv still stands and that government still presides. This fight is far from over. Here's the point. This war could continue for a long time, but the United States will continue to stand with Ukraine and Ukrainian people in the fight for freedom. And the Pentagon is sniffing an opportunity. Reports indicate it is all set to host leaders from top eight U.S. weapon manufacturers to discuss the industry's capacity to supply weapons. Just over a month of the war has meant a spike in stock value for American defense companies. And the deals are pouring in. Germany is all set to buy 35 U.S. F-35 fighter jets that cost about 77.9 million each. Billions are being made. Factors from armed private security contractors like Blackwater and Dincorp to defense companies, this war is a bonanza. It is a time to call out the American war economy. Let's debate. Okay, we have uh, Professor Mark Merowitz of the State University of New York from New York. Andrew K.P. Leung, China strategist from Hong Kong, uh, General G.D. Bakshi, uh, India's leading defense expert from New Delhi. And my first question is to Yevgeny Popov, Russian member of parliament and also a senior journalist. Mr. Popov, uh, today the biggest names in defense in America, Raytheon Technologies, Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Northrop Grunman, General Dynamics, L3 Harris Technologies, were reported to be meeting Pentagon officials to discuss their role in a protracted war in Ukraine. It seems, it seems, and, and welcome also to, to Valentin Yakushik from Kiev and, and Professor Andrew McLeod from King's College London. It seems, uh, Yevgeny Popov, that, uh, that the America is really excited about the prospect of a long war, of a long war, a protracted war, a never-ending war, they seem to be preparing for a very long war. Is Russia prepared for that? This is their most exciting moment as tens of thousands of Ukrainians continue to be killed. How ironical, mm -hmm. Professor Mark, and how cruel, how cruel for the American arms industry to be indulging in this kind of profit making, uh, you know, while Ukrainians die without committing a single American soldier. Yes, Professor Mark. Well, I think that is not the right focus. I mean, the gentleman spoke about the dream for America, but actually it's a nightmare that was created by Russia. You know, this would all stop in one minute if Russia stopped attacking with aggression against Ukraine. In fact, our president, President Biden, I believe today or yesterday, called Russia's actions genocide. So it's very, in about 10 seconds, if the Russians would pull out, then there would be no need to supply weapons to defend Ukraine no, against external aggression. Let me finish. And the point being that who started the war? Russia. Who is, committed, who is committing atrocities against civilians? This is our, our president is talking about this. So defense industry, in my opinion or not, is really besides the point. So I don't think they're excited about it. I think the defense industry of the United States makes itself available to provide weapons to defensive purposes, javelins and stingers, to protect the Ukrainian people, and particularly the innocent civilians, from the extraordinary aggression. And I'm, I'm quoting my president, President Biden, and my UN ambassador, right. and my secretary of state, who have spoken about this. So, so if Russia wants to stop, they so should this, stop, so this, and okay, then so, there won't be okay, any need for no, no, any no, weapons. No, no, that's all right. But no. uh, again, focus question, Mark. And Mr. Popov is a Russian MP. He will respond to you, not okay. me. I, I, I would love that. to engage with you. I would love to engage, but I, I say this to you. Just a simple and elementary question which can have a very, you know, binary kind of reply. Tell right. me, Professor uh, Mark, is it true or not that in America, as these billions, maybe trillions are spent, you know, and, and companies like Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Northrop, General Dynamics all make a lot of money, is it true or not that many jobs will be created in, in America? Is it Re true or not? Is it true or not that it will be excellent, excellent, excellent for your economy? Is it true or not there will be huge, huge profits for American companies, right? Uh, and is it true or not? Is it, is it true or not? Therefore, therefore, allow me to complete that the war, the war is a bonanza. 
for America. It's a bonanza of unparalleled proportions. It's a fantastic thing. It's the best thing that can happen for the American economy, the American people, for the American government and for the defense companies. It's, it's magical. It's magical. The turnover of these companies will go through the roof. Am I, am I right or wrong? Don't go into uh, the... You no, are, no, no, am I right? You are, am I right? How about this? You're right and wrong. Okay. There, no, I you're am right, right that the defense industry is an industry in our country, which is a capitalist industry, and there are defense industries around the world. These are big companies. No, no, but, and is it also States. true, Professor yeah. Mark, that after, after the exit from Afghanistan, the defense industry had no, had no source of sustenance till Ukraine happened? You needed Ukraine. You needed Ukraine. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an absurd argument. And here is the point why How I say that. Because if there were no attack by Russia, if there were no aggression by Russia, then there wouldn't be any need for all these countries, not just the United States, by oh, the Mr. way. Popov. It's other countries uh, too. Czech Republic is providing okay. weapons. Shall we open this? Finland, other, many other countries are uniting no, no. to I, save I, Ukraine I, yeah. from unabashed, unbald aggression okay. oh, that we have not seen shall we open in it the up? world since shall World we open War it up? So honestly, yes. Shall we, we open it up from London? Country, what do you think? These are companies, uh, Professor McLeod. I think... Defensive yeah, I think if, if Mark, Mark, Defensive Mark, would you let me speak, please? You. Mark, Mark, yes, can you let me like. speak, please? Go ahead. Yes, sir. Well, hang on, you don't know me, I don't know you, but I've been asked to speak, so Mark, please respect the other guests. I think that you're setting up the discussion here in the wrong way. It's not a binary argument. Um, there's a whole lot of complex things that are coming in here together, so I'll make four very quick points. Quick point one, it will be a long war, because if Russia succeeds in its territorial desire, as, then you're going to have multi-generation, multi-decade insurgency coming out of the Ukrainian people. That's clear. Point two, over the last century, Switzerland and the United States are the two countries that have economically grown the most because of conflict and war, one through banking and one through production. Third point, President Eisenhower is the first person to talk about the military industrial complex when he left the presidency. And fourthly, this is where Mark is right, none of this would have happened if Russia didn't invade Ukraine. So yes, some industries are going to profit. No, no. it's not right to set it up as binary. Yes, it's going to be a long war. And yes, I'm, the US I'm military focused. will win. Yes, Professor, Professor McLeod, I'm getting a response from General Bakshi here. I'm focused on the money part of it. And my, my only simple proposition is, and I'm not putting any value judgment, is that when Germany puts in a $100 billion injection in defense and they want to get F-35s, who do they buy it from? They buy it from the Americans. So all the billions, Americans. hundreds of billions. Raytheon, Raytheon says Europe is big. Raytheon says we're so excited. And what does Raytheon do? They're a missile manufacturer. They're excited. They, they, they have been... But uncontainable in their excitement. Uh, they be, the behest of American uh, General Bakshi, no, I, I made my point. General Bakshi, my point is on money making. General Bakshi. You know, uh, Arnab, it is, it is to my mind highly immoral that a nation, you know, uh, uh, induces the Ukrainians to fight the Americans and the NATO and then they leave them high and dry with promises that we'll keep selling you weapons. You can fight till the last Ukrainian standing, till the last building in Ukraine is standing. You keep fighting, we'll cheer you on. We'll give Zelensky a global platform to exhibit his oratorial skills. And at what cost? At the cost of the Ukrainian people. It is this that I feel terrible about. They have led the Ukrainians to face the music. They, the Ukrainian, 40 cities have been reduced to rubble. And, you know, you blame it very conveniently on Russia. May I invite you to read what the very respected Professor John Mearsheimer has said, who started this war? It is the Americans who pushed the Russians into a fight, who kept uh, pushing Mark. NATO to the borders Professor of Mark, Russia. Last year, you know, uh, Arnab, in July, they had a major military exercise in which the Americans, the Ukrainians, the Polish and the Latavians participated. They gave Zelensky the impression that you fight with Russia, we will step in. What happened in the month of December? They had a major naval exercise called Sea Breeze on the coast of the Baltic, on the coast of the Azov Sea. They invited 32 navies. 
you know what happened in december uh, the foreign minister of i mean so, the foreign secretary of the united states signs an agreement with the foreign but secretary saying, of ukraine yeah but but they're saying you know they, but they're saying the budapest 2008 agreement yeah but, they, that but they're mean, saying for all practical purposes yeah but they're saying i want to get i want to go to andrew ukraine, kp lunga i'm come back to mr popov the, the, the point the, what 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 NATO. the americans are saying and, and what what professor mcclord from you, london said one from london you, said they're saying they're saying we don't want to spend the money yes we will make money but you stop the war then nothing is going to be spent on the money they are saying the rest of the world russia china others need to do more to stop the war instead of talking about how much money america is going to make out of the war americans made the most money out of the second world war we forget the americans are, are have great dexterity in making money out of wars everyone knows about it but they say let putin stop the provocation there will be no war andrew yeah well, look i think first of all i think first of all sorry Yes, Andrew. Uh, which Someone Andrew? From Hong Kong. No, no, Andrew. Andrew K. P. Leung. Sorry, Andrew. Andrew Leung. Thank okay. You. All right. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, uh, I think that uh, first of all, um, of course, the United States want to drag down uh, Russia um, and and try to uh, eventually even destroy um, um, uh, 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 Russia and and also President Putin. um because this has been going on a long time now i mean it's uh, over a cup uh, nearly two months of the war so um but on the other hand uh, there is no way uh, that president putin would back down i i don't think that is also in the, neither in the interest of russia or the united states to have a long war uh, in the case of russia obviously they don't want it to drag on indefinitely they've lost uh, a lot of soldiers a lot of equipment um so they by concentrating their forces in the donbass area uh, they want to achieve a quicker victory as far as the united states is concerned dragging it out is not going to um it it, 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 it is no solution because there is a huge inflation caused by this war in the united states and the fed has got to uh, increase interest rates already which is bad for the economy economy and bad for president biden's midterm elections So I don't think that it is in America's interest to have a long war, but there is no doubt that by supplying uh, weapons uh, uh, to Ukraine, uh, the United States want to track no, down I, I think, Russia. I think I, I, I disagree with you, Andrew. I, I want to I want to check out how Valentin thinks because he's from Kiev and he's uh, Professor Professor Valentin Yakushik. I think it is in America's interest to have a long war. I disagree with Andrew K. P. Lung. I think it is in Ukrainians Ukrainians' uh, interest to end the war. It, it is the only people the only people who will suffer the most like the iraqis did are the ukrainians like the afghans did are the ukrainians i'll give you one example professor valentin what happened in the second gulf war me, what happened in the second gulf war no 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 i uh, just want me uh, exxon mobil chevron halliburton all went to iraq all the oil it went to america 80% was exported almost 30% of air people in iraq had no energy and were in absolute poverty so the question is america will extend the war at your cost professor yakushik yeah. but america is different in iraq and afghanistan a lot of american budget military budget was plundered by some corrupt uh, uh, businessmen yeah biggest uh, biggest company there's so much corruption uh, in so ukraine in, corruption has been one of ukraine's well, biggest problems i, I meant Yeah, what happened before? As to Ukraine, first of all, uh, in Putin's uh, team who dragged him into this trap, there are probably tacit agents of transnational uh, military-industrial complex and haters of East Slavic uh, civilization. So they did all possible to destroy the unity of Ukrainian people and Russian people, and also to let American and other uh industrial complex institutions to earn a lot of money uh, in this uh, uh war as to ukraine we have two possible strategies now when ukrainian military capacities in uh, in producing our own uh, tech military uh, equipment are undermined either to be for 10 years uh, part of the project of being the biggest Uh, consumers of uh, western uh, military uh, production or 
to create a new version of a new concept of what is future Ukraine, how it will be, uh, be behave, not being just the battlefield. No, but, 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 but you, know, you know, they will, I, my, my worry is, my worry is, and I want to get Professor, uh, Mr. Popov on this limited time, the Americans will help in the destruction of Ukraine, and then the American companies will say, let's make the arms to destroy Ukraine, then let us bring in our contractors to rebuild Ukraine. It's, it's a reality. When, when, they, when they left Afghanistan, the Afghans were holding on to the wheels of their transport aircraft. They fell from the sky. That image is frightening and Ukrainians should look at it today. I want, I want Mr. Yevgeny Popov to respond to you, please. Uh, Mr. Popov, uh, the other flip side is there's going to be a lot of money, technology, funding behind the arms. So Russians will also hurt if the arms are used against you. To be continued. Yeah, I really wish, you know, we had broadcasters like this here in uh, North America. Uh, the only one that I watch now is uh, Tucker Carlson. And you really have to wonder why the government allows so much BS on the networks if it's not that they want people to be stupid and ill-informed. You know, it's, it's a shame. It's a shame. It shows the government has no respect for its citizens.